calculus, let's talk about derivatives. So when we talk about a derivative, what a derivative does is it tells you the slope of a function at a point, or the slope of a tangent line. If we were to draw a line that touches a curve at one point, it tells us the slope. So remember that slope is rise over run, and another way of writing rise over run is change in y over change in x. Change in y is the rise up or down, change in x is the run, going left or right. So this little Greek letter delta, looks like a triangle, is short for change in. The symbol we normally use for a derivative, at least in the simplest case, is dy dx. dy is using a regular letter d instead of a Greek letter d, and same thing here using a regular letter D instead of a Greek letter D. It still means change in Y over change in X. We're looking at the slope when we take a derivative. So if you're given a function like Y equals 2X squared minus 5X plus 4, you probably remember the rule is to take this exponent, multiply by the exponent. So here we would take the 2, multiply it by this 2, and we'll end up with 4X, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent, 2 minus 1 is 1, so we end up with 4x to the first, which we can just write as 4 times x. And then minus 5x, we do the same thing, this is 5x to the first, we multiply by the exponent to just get 5 times 1, and then x to the first, we subtract 1 from that exponent, and that becomes x to the 0, so x to the 0, anything to the 0 power is just 1 so we don't have to write 5 times 1. So this is the derivative of this function, y equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 4. The derivative of the 4 part is just 0. Why? What does a graph of just this part of the equation look like? y equals 4. Well, it would look like this. Here's y, here's x, and y is always equal to 4. What's the slope of that line? It's zero. So that's why the derivative of just a constant like four is zero. The slope of that part of the function is always flat or always equal to zero. So when you know a mathematical rule, also make sure you understand why that's the mathematical rule. So what this derivative tells us is the slope of this function at any point. Now over here I have a graph of this function. So since this is a quadratic equation, it's going to look like a parabola. And as we see, here is the parabola. So what we can do with this derivative is find the slope at any point. So for example, if we look right here, where x equals minus 2, if we want to know, okay, what if I drew a tangent line that just touched that curve at one point right there, what would the slope be? Plug in x equals 2 here, sorry, minus 2, 4 times minus 2 minus 5 equals minus 13. So that says that the slope of that tangent line is minus 13. Rise over run. So what that tells us is if we were to go from, say, minus 2 to minus 1, that the rise over the run is going to be minus 13 over 1. And so when we go from here over to here, we're going over 1. We need to be going down 13 to get to the other point on that curve. And that looks about right. Looks like we're starting off at about 20. This point down here looks like it could be at about y equals 7. So we're going from 20 down to around 7, minus 13. Now other things we can do that are a little more interesting and a little more powerful is suppose this parabola represented the cost of doing something. And our goal was to find the minimum cost right here, where this curve is lowest. Suppose this is I don't know how many units of a good we're producing or, or how many units of a good we're buying, and we want to buy them for the cheapest per unit cost, and maybe that's what this curve is telling us. What value of x here is going to give us that lowest per unit cost? 
what's the slope of this blue curve right at that minimum? Well, if we do a super zoom in here, we can see that the slope right there is zero. It's flat. So if you want to know where a point on a curve is flat, then see where the slope is zero. So if we go back over to our function here that tells us the slope and set that equal to zero, solve it for x. So add 5 to both sides, we get 4x equals 5, x equals 5 over 4, or 1.25. That tells us that when x equals 1.25, that is where that curve is going to be at the minimum. Now what if we wanted to know what is that minimum, right? We want to look over here on the y-axis and see what is that value over here when x is 1.25, well, what we need to do then is plug that 1.25 back into the original equation over here. y equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 4. We'll see what we get. 2 times 1.25 squared minus 5 times 1.25. Uh, we get that the value there is only 0.875. And it does look like that's getting pretty close to zero down there. So if we want to find the minimum of this function, choose x to be 1.25, and then the minimum actually is 0.875. So, in short, you use the derivative to find the slope of a function. Now, a lot of times, what we'll want to do in an economics class when we're finding the slope is find the marginal. So if you have a function that's a total, like a total cost, the derivative tells you the slope, or how fast is cost changing, how fast is the additional cost going up. Let's just practice doing another couple of simple derivatives here. All right, so let's take the derivative of this function. A little more complicated, but we just use the same rule. So here we'd be doing dy, what's the change in y? dr, as we change r, since that's the variable in this equation. Multiply by the exponent, subtract 1 from the exponent. So 4 times 5 is 20, r to the third, minus 3 times 6 is 18, r, subtract 1 from that exponent, squared. r squared is 2r to the first, minus 4r just becomes minus 4, and then the derivative of that constant 6 is just 0, so we don't need to write that down. So there's our derivative. And that would tell us the slope of that function at any point. A little bit more complicated example here, but not too bad. All we're dealing with here is just focusing on those exponents and using exactly the same procedure that we've been using before. So here, dy, dr, the slope of this function as r changes, take that 4.2, multiply by the 5.2, and we get 21.84 times r, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent. 4.2 minus 1, 3.2 minus 3 times 6 is 18, r, subtract 1 from the 3, and we get 2. Here we have plus 2r to the minus 2 power. So, we take the minus 2, multiply by the positive 2, and we get minus 4 r, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent. Minus 2 minus 1 gives us minus 3. So minus 4 r to the minus 3 power. And here we have minus 4 r, so that just becomes minus 4 r to the 0. Now this term, 1 over r, how can we write 1 over r with an exponent? Well, remember that 1 over r is the same thing as r to the minus 1 power. So when you're taking a derivative, it's a little easier to think about that 1 over r is r to the minus 1. So then we do the same procedure. Minus 1 times r, so minus r, and then subtract 1 from that exponent. Minus 1, minus 1 is minus 2, 
And then, as usual, that plus 3, the derivative is 0, so we don't need to worry about that. So the reason why derivatives are so common in economics is since derivatives are a slope and marginal, like marginal cost, marginal benefit, marginal tax rate, marginal utility, these are all concepts of slope. If I produce one more unit, how much does my cost go up? That's a marginal cost, and that's also a slope. So if we have a cost function like this, this is a total cost function, if we take the derivative of it, we'll get a marginal cost function. So marginal cost as a function of quantity is going to be equal to the derivative of total cost with respect to quantity. So if we add one more unit, what's the additional cost? What's the change in total cost? We just take the derivative as normal here. 3 times 4 is 12. q squared minus 4.6 q to the first power plus 6. And then this 52 does not enter into the marginal cost function. The derivative of that is just 0. Now, if we were looking at this cost function, what we would say is that this 52 is the fixed cost. A fixed cost is anything that does not increase as you produce more units. It's also how much cost you have to pay when you produce zero units. You can see if we plug in zero for all of these Qs, we're going to be left with a cost of $52. So that's our fixed cost. The marginal cost doesn't really depend on that fixed cost. How costs change as we produce one more unit. So how do we use this to find the marginal cost for producing the fourth unit? We just plug 4 into this marginal cost function for Q. Take a second and do that on your calculator. See what you get. Well, 12 times 4 squared, we're going to get $192 minus 4.6 times 4 is 18.4, $18.40, plus 6, and we get that the marginal cost of the fourth unit is $179.60. And 60 cents. What if we wanted to know what's the total cost of producing all four units, not just the additional cost of the fourth? Well, that's where the total cost function comes in, right? So if we plugged in four into this function for Q, and then we add in that 52, that would tell us the total cost of producing all four units. But if we want the marginal cost of just the fourth, we use the derivative and plug it in there. All right. So I hope that was a pretty good review of derivatives and a little bit about how we use them in economics for you. I'm going to be making another video. I'll put a link in the description of the video below about partial derivatives and how we use those. If you have any questions, as always, post them in the comment section below. And as always, I wish you the best of luck in all of your economic studies, guys. Bye bye.